Yeah. So some of you watching online might be wondering what those um, those green lasers are. Uh, so we use those to help get an idea of how large yeah, um, anything that we're looking at with the ROV is uh, down in the depth. So those green lasers are spaced 10 meters apart. Or excuse me, 10 meters. 10 centimeters <laughs> apart. <laughs> the <lo> <laughs> it's funny as the last watch said the exact same thing. Oh, wow. Look at us go. <laughs> <laughs> It's been so long, we've uh, <laughs> Rusty. forgotten all the numbers. You yeah. have to remember how to do this. <laughs> Where are we going? <laughs> Back to Johnson and Joel. Who are we? How did we lose a push core cap? Yeah. Why uh, are it? Oh, go Brown, ahead. Brown one, that was zero two, two zero? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so now we're, whenever we have some downtime, if anybody else in the control room wants to introduce themselves, so tell us a little bit about your background, where you're from, is what is it that you're studying while yeah, you're on the ship, be. feel free to do so. I think everybody already knows I'm Brittany, I'm the science communication fellow, one of them. I'm here from the California Science Center in Los Angeles, visiting on the ship for a month, and I'm thrilled to be here. All right, nav. Um, Science. When <laughs> ROV is happy here, uh, I think we can start our move um, towards waypoint two, but I'll leave that up to the front rows pacing. Kay. Can we confirm that went in um, B, starboard bow box B? Okay. Uh, four inboard ones, A, B, C, D. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's pretty distinctive. I think we can tell it apart if there's any confusion on, on deck. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. Yeah, it was C. Oh, it's C. Mm hmm What's your happiness level? <laughs> Are we happy to move? Zero seven zero. Roger. Yep. Agreed. How about a doing zero point two knots? And we'll do a small step. Great. I'll let you get set up. Those are still breaking apart here. Fissures, cracks. Yeah. A little jagged crest. So somebody online wants to know, will this dive be looking for something in particular? Um, yeah, so while we're diving in this Johnston Atoll region, we are specifically looking at the biology as well as the geological makeup of this uh, particular region. So I believe Steve is looking specifically for coral, right? Can you tell us more about what you're doing, Steve? Yeah, I, so generally, you know, we have a, a large priority list of things we want to observe, document, uh, potentially collect. Um, my own research concerns corals, but uh, trying to identify both species of corals from collections as well as documenting their ecology and how they interact with their environment. But for example, most of what we've seen so far have been these sponges uh, on, on the wall here. 
Roger. Um, uh, down in the sediment, we did observe a, a large number of um, other animals like sea, uh, sea pigs and uh, Three zero. one black coral, I believe, and some polychaete worms. I would love to see a sea pig one day. And then Nick, yeah, point two B. what are you looking for while we're here? Yeah, so uh, we're looking for this lovely basalt. Um, more specifically, uh, basalt that is unaltered, which can be a tricky task, as we've learned from our previous samples. Uh, but that's more of a numbers game. Um, go ahead, Steve, did you no, want to no, say no. something? I, I, I was thought just, I saw a floaty. Yeah, it was <laughs> a minopsid isopod. Um, yeah, they're, they're float in the water column. Oh, okay. So yeah, we're just basically looking for uh, unaltered rock samples uh, with uh, particular mineral phases that are uh, applicable for making age determinations using argon-argon uh, geochronology. And this way we can uh, place an age constraint on the rock to try to reconstruct uh, an origin of a possible hotspot track. Cool, thank you. Are you locked on anything right now, Gabby? Or could I do a DVL reset? Cool. Perfect. I'm going to make it a goal of this cruise. By the end of it, I'm going to understand at least half of the rock things you say. <laughs> Maybe I'll a quarter. I'll, I'll introduce new, new terms as we go along. Right, sounds great. I also, when I have to choose geochronology, I choose argon, argon. It's my geochronology of choice. That's the best. <laughs> best way to go. Okay, nerds, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> No, really, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> We're talking about one of the uh, ways we can use to date rocks, one of the geochronology techniques. Uh -huh. And uh, it's uh, pretty much the only uh, technique that we'll be using with rocks that we find under the sea. We won't be doing much zircon dating uh, since we don't find too many zircons in here. Uh, we primarily deal with uh, potassium uh, inclusions, which is uh, not inclusions, but uh, potassium within the crystal lattice. Uh, and we can use a, a, a derivative of potassium argon dating, which is called argon argon dating. So a little bit more accurate and precise. It's basically just a way of measuring different ratios of different chemicals in the rock and yeah. uh, determining rates at which they decay mm -hmm. and their constituent elements decay over time. Yeah. And that time is reflective of something about how the rock formed or when it formed, right? Uh, when it cooled in a magma yeah. chamber, yeah. Yeah. Argon, Argon. Yeah, okay. I can move the ship up as well on the next step. Yeah. There's a lot of really angular stuff here. Yeah, there is. So this would be called the talus slope, you think? Yeah, yeah, I think that... Uh, that term applies here. Talus slope is uh, basically kind of a rock cliff uh, where you see uh, broken off debris from any type of slope. Um, and it can be subaerial or uh, submarine. A lot of pelagic sediment. These are often the areas where we don't find a lot of uh, animals. Uh, and it usually tells us something about their preferences for habitat as well because talus slopes may not be entirely stable and uh, yeah. they may be prone to failures yeah and so animals that grow slowly don't like to live on substrate that moves I got like five meters up to that step so we'll see how how the swing happens for atlanta yeah yeah. So 
Somebody in the chat wanted to know. Just keep going. Okay. Yeah. Just bring it up a little bit. Let's give that a whirl. Bridge nav. Let's do three zero meters, bearing zero five zero, please. So yeah, somebody wanted to know what is a sea pig? Question mark exclamation point. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen one. So. Pass that over to Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Sea pig is a type of sea cucumber, and usually uh, that term applies to sea cucumbers in the deep sea uh, that have what look like small um, projections out of the lower side of their body that appear to be like legs. Um, numerous, numerous of these uh, you know, podia, these leg um, structures that allow it to move across the soft sediment seafloor. And um, they have these large tentaculated uh, mouths that basically pick up bits of sediment, ingest them. Um, so they basically just you know, eat continuously uh, across the sediment all day, every day. Um, some of them some of them, so traditionally the sea pigs uh, that are most familiar with, you know, people who might be most familiar with sea pigs might think of the genus Scotoplanes, uh, which is usually found off of like California and you know further points south all the way to the Antarctic, um, which can be found out here, but I don't think it's very common. Normally we find um, sea cucumbers or sea pigs in the genus genera Amperima or um, Penny Agony out here, uh, but there are others as well. You want to uh, collect another rock while we're here? Yeah, if there's <laughs> something. Uh... <laughs> Let's poke. <laughs> that was. <laughs> You've been waiting nice. for that. It's like the biggest rock. <laughs> it is the biggest rock. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I, we can definitely take a look at it. I'm just giving you a hard time. That's a very quick response. <laughs> <laughs> like, I have to make it challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of rocks, um, somebody wanted to know how, do we have any data yet about, about, oh my goodness, let me say about one more time, how <laughs> old the rocks that we collected on their first dive were? Not yet. Uh, it's going to be quite a long and arduous process before we can uh, collect dates. Uh, so after uh, we collect them, the first thing we did is uh, we sliced them open on uh, aboard the ship to see if there's any pervasive alteration, uh, kind of a first order look to see if we can uh, date the rocks. After that, we'll uh, send over some thin sections to look at uh, petrographic. Is that rock too big? Oh, the big rock. Yeah, it's uh, a big it's rock. Like 25 Maybe. centimeters long, 30 centimeters long. I have, uh, can we tilt up? Uh, I have maybe another one we can talk about that's too big. I mean, I, I, I think it's possible to fit I, it. In. Yeah, we yeah, can collect it. It's just a big rock. There's rock. no reason to, yeah, there's plenty of rocks here. <laughs> <laughs> plenty to can, choose from. Can plenty we, of rocks in the Can city. we zoom back here? There's a, a rock that might be a, a two for a collection with a stick on it. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, yeah, uh, I'll just go up there. Steve so just wants squishy yeah. rock. <laughs> oh, I mean, if, if it's possible, uh -huh. uh, and if it's a good rock. <laughs> the one rock with biology. <laughs> so yeah, Biology is all around us, though. It's not just that. <laughs> <laughs> There's biology it's you can't see. Until oh. it's so <laughs> slow at the step. Invisible biology. That's part of the soft, the, 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 the mud bottom script. There's, there's life around us. Just small, we can't <laughs> see it. So what you're saying is life uh, finds a way. There life it finds is. A way. <laughs> there it is. Did we just watch Jurassic Park? Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> oh, minute five of watch. That, that was the title of my dissertation, <laughs> Life Finds a Way. Was it really? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Although, if I did it again, I would. Yeah. Do well, it again, Steve. If, if this is not a good rock, we'll pick another one. Uh, you know, Sorry, it's, it's good for the the coral potentially. Do but you want to circle it again for yeah, Karen? I, I, yeah, I, I, I think I lost it. It's yeah. it's sticking straight up at us, so it's a little harder to see the stick. Um, yeah. it's just like halfway between the lasers and the bottom of the screen. Oh yeah, I think I see it. Maybe there. Yeah, yeah there it is. Good eye. Um, 
Yeah, I doubt we'll be able to get that rock, but yeah. I'll give it a go. Can you zoom in, video? Yep. Well, the zoom is helpful either way, and then we'll go back to uh, rock, rocking, rocking it. Yeah, that's that's on that's in the crust. Okay. Yeah, yes. I, that sounds. It looks like it's encrusted. Do you have any more zoom on it though? Just yeah. for the. Yeah. This, the wow, sorry, sorry to zoom. hijack the. Uh, no. The collection here. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's a bamboo coral. What what kind of coral was that? It's a bamboo coral. Okay. Look at the size of those uh, sclerites. You can see them. They're like radiating out from the tentacles. Yeah. Humongous. Wow. The ship's just stopping. Okay. Um, All right. So Atalanta is catching up. Um, so it's either getting close to time to move Herc or make a quick sample or decide we're going to stay here. Let's zoom out. And uh, is there anything in the immediate area that... No, I think we can move along just a little bit. Um, probably get something before we leave this little field, though, hopefully, in general. Okay. Yeah, definitely should be doable. We can do, like, a quick flyby sample if there's something you see or... Okay. It, it looks like most of these are loose, but when we zoom in, it seems to not be the case. They're just really nice pillow basalts, so uh, okay. we might just have to poke and prod a little. Okay. Moving on. Um, do, are you in uh, science? Are you interested in like moving through this section, or do you like going slow and picking our way? Um, I think I, I think there's definitely a sample along here that we can that we can pick. So slow would be nice uh, if possible. Okay. The ship just stopped, so we've got. A bit more movement on Argus, probably, and then... Okay. It looks like we made a yeah. nice, clear pass of that cliff. Great. Great. Awesome. Cool. Nick, look at how angular these are. They are <laughs> wonderful. So angular. So hard to choose. <laughs> <laughs> the so paradox many. of choice. So many nice rocks. I wonder if this is loose. I don't think it will be. Um, could be. If you can zoom in on it, we might be able to get a better look. Yeah, they're Probably. a little deceiving at, at a distance because they are so angular. So angular. <laughs> <laughs> uh, go for zoom video. <laughs> oh, ho. that seems detached, doesn't it? I don't know. We can give it a shot. Give it a poke. Give it a yeah. poke. Why not? <clears throat> I asked Steve if it would be possible in the future to uh, attach a rock saw to uh, Herc. I'm sure the engineers would appreciate that. <laughs> um, we've had uh, hydraulic uh, band saws on before. They're from uh, the meat cutting, the, the like uh, slaughterhouse industry. Okay. The underwater. Yeah, meat you just cutting industry <laughs> for the sea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh. Oh, thanks, Steve. This is going to a dark place. <laughs> yeah, it's really for that, that Still you know, early in the shift. You have to cut our V tether. Those uh, bands that are great. Yeah. 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 Too soon, yeah. Jim. <laughs> no. <Too> soon. <laughs> <laughs> on the run. Who do rocks who run? So, Ooh, oh, no. biology. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you must like the rock as well. <laughs> Don't take my rock. It's definitely not attached. Oh my god. Ah. Oh no. Oh man. Let's see. Hi. Um, I can pick up and try and find it. Uh, I just need oh. everything to settle out a little bit. Yeah. So, Nick, would you say that basalt is the ideal rock for dating? <laughs> 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 uh, it depends on how they treat you, I suppose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, for for submarine uh, rocks, yeah. Uh, basalt is, is the primary rock that we're going to be looking at. Excellent. Uh, on continental settings, it'll it'll probably be uh, something something different. 
uh, something that contains uh, zircons, ideally. When you say on continental settings, you mean land? Land, <laughs> yes. Continental crust, <laughs> right. um, like not in the water. It like, yeah, I think it may have gone down slope. Sub aerial. Um, <laughs> science. <laughs> yes. We can chase Another that way. particular ro rock down slope, or we can look at some of the others that are in our view, sort of in our view. Uh, um, there's a angular rock there. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, let's that first rock. Yeah. Uh, was it this one you were? Yeah, that's the one I was looking pointing at. Pointing that. Yeah. Let's give that one a shot. By the way, Gabby, we do have the stick of science here. If you do need it. Oh, the stick of pointing. Sorry, the stick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Science pointing? Sci it's kind of science name. pointing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the analog telestrator. For those who are uh, the analog unfamiliar. telestrator. <laughs> like a magic wand. Yes. <laughs> With the uh, rubber tubing at the end yeah. so you don't poke through the screen. Yeah. Don't want that. Sure, video appreciates that. Uh, yep. I Is that do. falling apart on you? Yeah, it crackles. Yeah, you don't want that. Okay. Okay. Um, we have fallen behind a little bit, so no if problem. I'm just going to pick up, uh, just keep out in front. Um, but it looks like there's the rock field continues, so Great. Go. Um, we'll just do that. Rocks okay. on, rocks on, rocks. Uh, rocks, on rocks. Are you okay for me to pick up? It's fine to have the arm there. Yeah. Yes. And that's what Rob likes to call a squishy rock. Mm. Uh, we don't want any Not of crunchy? Those. Not crunchy. crunchy. Personally, personally, it's not my favorite music genre either. <laughs> Squishy. <laughs> Steve. Uh, Steve. Uh, yo, we're on this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Two shots of espresso and ready to go. There we go. Welcome to 4 o'clock shift, everyone. We're going to be coming up pretty fast here. So people are wondering who are the people in the front row, which is a great question. Um, who are these people? The mysterious <laughs> front, front row. row. Uh, Enigmat enigmatic. <laughs> <laughs> enigmatic <laughs> megafauna. <laughs> like that. Sometimes charismatic. <laughs> Rarely. Rarely. <laughs> uh, Samantha Wishnack, navigator um, on this cruise. I'm also the operations coordinator for the Ocean yeah. Exploration Trust. Next to me is uh, Gabby Inglis, uh, pilot. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's it. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> the whole story. Very focused driving her. <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, I'm Karen Martinez. I'm ROV pilot, uh, visiting here from Mbari. Woo. Woo. And I'm Logan Ossenjok, video engineering intern. Um, visiting here from UC Santa Barbara, but I just graduated, so. Go, go, now go. I'm a free, now I'm free, I'm a free agent. <laughs> Logan, you're also kind of quiet. Is that just for me or anyone else? Um, um, Logan and Gabby are also uh, kind of quiet. Both quiet? OK. Hopefully this um, is Logan, better. you sounded good to me. OK. Yeah, maybe it was just me. Uh, My mic's a little closer now. OK. That works. Is that better? Yep, better. OK, cool. And look at these. Lots of rocks here look Beautiful, good, yeah. whatever. OK, okay. Yeah. Um, I am far more in a good spot, so point them out. Okay, we have a couple on screen here. I don't know. Uh, this one would be good. Maybe okay. this one over here. Uh, this one. There's a. <laughs> you take your choice. <laughs> <laughs> I want them all, but you know, okay. I understand that wouldn't be possible. There can only be one. <laughs> uh, whatever's easiest. Let's mm. see. What does that look like? We're gonna need a bigger Alvin plate. Can you, can you take a still? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good still. Is that the rock's best? Still, side? lots of broken the, pillows. I think so. <clears throat> which indicates that there might be more pillows upslope. Mm. Oh, there's yeah, some there, xenophile pores. Everything's like really loose here. Yeah. Still cam has got a beautiful shot of it right now. Mm -hmm. my, oh, new, wow. my new favorite camera. Yeah. Sorry, Zeus. Um, actually, I'm going to move because this one might auto sample right into the still cam. You guys got your still cam shot? Yep. Mm-hmm. The still cam is not good for sampling rocks. If we have to sacrifice it. <laughs> In the name of rocks, yeah. In the name of rock collecting. You understand. Yeah. In the name An earlier of iteration rocks. was used for sampling water, though, so there is precedent. <laughs> oh, Tim, on fire. I'll 
on. Let me see. Did that crack open? No, that, that it's just, just it, rotating. Yeah, yeah, loose, loose, loose stuff. Anytime the rock tends to crack, whenever we grab it, that's pretty much an auto okay. automatic throwaway. Okay, you can. out here is brutal. Oh. <laughs> vast, the sea is vast, you know. <laughs> Lots of rocks. A lot of rocks here. in the sea. <laughs> Not all of them are dateable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Throw away the cracked one. So there's one of those. Um, I think it was... Nobody wants a broken rock. Uh, science. <laughs> that yes. was the one right in front of the arm, right? It's a little bit below the arm now. The really big one. Um... That's a good question. Uh, sorry. I think it was. I think that was the original one that caught your eye, but there's okay. a lot of loose ones here. So, Ooh. Ooh. what about that one that was sliding down there? Okay. It's trying to make an escape. It knows we're eyeing it. So yeah. It was volunteering. It's like a squat lobster all over again. <laughs> we do have an automatic rock sample there on the jaws. Just a little wee one. to tell is that flat uh, I think it's just the edge of it video okay. can you zoom a bit yeah is that helpful that's good yeah I'm trying to decide if it's just a thick slab of crust that might have peeled off Will you be able to see, like, just when we hold it up? Um, I mean, I, I think if it, you have, like, a tabular structure on the top and the bottom, it might not be ideal, but um, I, I think this might work. I mean, how, how, how thick is that? Yeah, I think that'll be okay. Yeah, that looks all right. Can we keep going on this bin? Okay. Uh, so what did you what did you say, Data? Where do you want it? Uh, what? Keep turning the rock oh, okay. slowly, please. Some scratches and scrapes, pretty yeah. angular. Yeah. About maybe 20 centimeters long by about 15 centimeters wide, something like that. So I, I think we probably have room in starboard E, okay. uh, even though there's a rock in there. What does it say is in there? It's a broken push core. Bro handle. Okay, yeah. So starboard E. Okay, good. Uh, go wide. For sample, Selva? Yes, please. Thank you. Oh, and I'll get you one more camera. There's E. So getting back to your earlier question, Brittany, uh, it takes at least a month just to prepare a rock uh, from the point, from the time we, we, we start sample preparation um, to pack it into uh, little tubes for irradiation. Uh, we send it off to a nuclear lab to get those samples irradiated, uh, and then um, we come I back and we can run them through a mass spectrometer uh, to analyze oh, their yeah, ages. So it's, it's a very long process before we can actually get an age from any particular rock. Got it. Would you estimate that these rocks are at least 10 years old? Um, based on previous studies, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Got it. laughs> Just 10? Just 10. Just 10. <laughs> at least 10. All right, so we are getting some questions about 
the ROV that we're using, Hercules, um, how much force do the grabbers have and how much of a delay is from controls and the ROV's reaction? I'm going to pull ahead just a little bit too. This is pretty murky. You okay with your arm position right now? Yeah, I'm we happy. shouldn't hit anything. I think I'm facing just straight starboard. Okay. Okay, so E, I'm going for. Yeah, if you're happy, I'll carry on putting it yep, in. Yeah, go for it. I think we've got some murk on the vehicle, so it's just sort of chasing us around. Okay, this going E, right? Yep, the yep. forward one. Very nice. All right. After we've settled our business here, we can keep on continuing upslope. Roger. Oh, we got some bonus rocks on the porch. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Uh, can you get those? Give those a little flick off. I don't like stowaways. <laughs> I invited them. I apologize. <laughs> so yeah, we are using our in order to carry out this dive. Uh, when we say ROV, that stands for Remotely Operated Vehicle. So there is nobody inside of the ROV that we are seeing um, on these video feeds. So the main one that we're using is Hercules. Uh, that's the one that all the, or I should say most of the cameras are attached to. It's flicking those rocks off his off the porch right now, getting those rocks off. Um, and then we also have Atalanta. So Atalanta is, I guess you could say, like the sidekick for Hercules. Um, you can see on the video feed number two, Atalanta is above Hercules and getting that uh, view from above. So uh, yeah, Hercules is I, I think that we've come up with maybe about the size of a USPS mail truck. <laughs> maybe about that size, so pretty large. Oh, uh, an Escalade. An Escalade? Yes. Like Escalade. Okay. It's, it's, it's right, right in weight, <laughs> actually, and size. All right, all right. New Herc is? New Herc is, yeah. Cool. Um, so, Gabby, science is ready to move. Okay. Are you happy to? Um, I'm ready. Karen, are you ready? I'm ready. Cool. Great. Moving. Bridge nav. Let's do another three zero meters, zero five zero. Unless we see something come up on the sonar, we can yep. put the next one in. Okay, just keep going. Yeah. Cool. And we're going zero, sorry, you gave it zero five zero again? Or zero e seven zero? Zero five zero. Okay. We can go back to zero seven zero. Whatever yeah. gets whatever okay. gets us where we're going. We might do a little like zigzag. Yeah. 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 That's fine. Somebody's wondering about Argus. Okay, so Argus is another ROV that um, uh, we've used before here on the Nautilus. Um, Argus 
has not been retired per se, uh, just kind of utilizing Atalanta for now. Um, it's a smaller ROV, it's a little bit more compact, easier to maneuver, um, but we, I believe, still have plans to use Argus in the future. Definitely, Argus is just on, on shore at the moment. Move is in. Great. Move is on. Move is on. Move is moving. Move is happening. Move is yeah. moving. Yeah. <laughs> I'm picking ship up is shipping. Putting down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look at this rock here. Whoa, yeah. Is that one rock? Wow. I have no idea. I know a guy who knows. Hey, science, though. what's going on with this big rock? <laughs> uh, that's a very good question. It's a beautiful rock. It's got a little radial structure to it. Um, uh, yeah, it had a interesting, interesting history of cooling, and I don't know what else to say about it. <laughs> Beautiful rock. <laughs> it's a beautiful okay. rock. rock. Yeah. <laughs> it is really angular, but it looks like it's part of the uh, part of the part of the crust itself. So it may or may not be, but it is huge. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, it'd be interesting to chop it up and see what's inside, but not on our watch. <laughs> not on this watch. <laughs> not until we get the tow line attached to her. Yeah. Okay, it looks less odd from this angle. Fifteen meters left on this move. Okay. I guess you can put in your zero seven zero yeah. if you need that to get to where we're going. Sure. Let's do that. It's looking pretty consistent in the sonar. Great. Bridge now. Can we uh, move to three zero meters zero seven zero? While we're waiting, uh, just at the bottom of the frame, there's something we might want to be able to zoom on. Okay, can you point it out to yep. me? Yep, can you, uh, it's just outside the frame now, I can't, okay. for some reason, uh, yeah, right down a little bit more. So on my Telestrator, they moved the, the bar to select the different tools down to the bottom, so I can't actually circle anything below oh, no. <laughs> on the bottom. <laughs> How are we um, doing here? Inconvenient. Yeah, I lost it. All oh, right, cats. forget it. Um, I'll just keep zigzagging back and forth. So yeah. We won't, like, what was it? Soon? It was a white blob. Ah. Um, I see a white blob. You see a white blob? Yeah. Sort of five o'clock of the lasers. I don't see it. Maybe it's not the same white blob that you're seeing. Mm. Crunchy or squishy? It looks it looks spongy. Yeah, uh, that's all right. Okay. Well, keep poking it around. It may have been an artifact. Okay. And all these wonderful basalts. <laughs> A lot of wonderful rocks this morning. <laughs> But are they dateable? <laughs> That's the question. Reminds me to put that on our bingo card for next time. <laughs> <laughs> next time. Rock pun. Well, we can zoom on the anemone at least if, oh, we, yeah. if you can. 
Hey, buddy. Go for zoom. Something coming out of its mouth. Or maybe yeah, going maybe. in its mouth. Can you go wide yeah. video? Yep. Thanks. Okay, go for the zoom again. Go in tighter, maybe. Looks like it's a tentacle. Yep. Basically, the equivalent of moving its food to its mouth and hmm. ingesting it. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Eighteen meters left on this move. Zero seven zero. Okay. Hmm. Wow, Adelante is getting way strung out. Oh no. I uh, maybe we let this one settle out a little bit just in case yeah. we encounter another one of those. Clips. Sounds good. Yeah, because Adelante hasn't even started moving, yeah. and we moved sixty meters. Yeah. What are those? Uh, are those? 20 oh, yeah. meters? Uh, 10. 10 meters? Okay. Oh. Nope. Uh, there we go. <laughs> 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 too, too close. Okay. Would you prefer more zoom in on this? No. Looks okay. great. great. We have some viewers from Michigan. Good morning. Um, the depth that we are currently diving at is 2,691 meters, so just around 9,000 feet deep. Um, the max depth that Hercules can dive to is about 4,000 meters. So somebody is wondering about the oldest rocks on the seabed. Where can those be found? So we're most likely to find the oldest rocks near uh, subduction trenches. Um, so they can be up to 180 million years old. Uh, also, in the Mediterranean Sea, you might find the oldest seafloor, uh, which is a remnant of an ancient uh, ocean called the Titus Sea. Ooh. So Mediterranean Sea is actually one of some of the oldest crust that we still have uh, that hasn't been subducted beneath the earth. Nice. I feel like Atalanta hasn't moved at all. I know. That's How much is that? I have to do in bigger steps. Three meters. Okay. So. Okay. Well, Steve, what do you think? Grab another rock. <laughs> <laughs> Take the advantage of that as well. Pause. Uh, yeah. So, do is this kind of terrain supposed to keep on like this uh, from the sonar? Is that my interpretation? Yeah. 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 Let's uh, let's settle out. Uh, let's let the whenever we finish our next move, let it settle out and see what we can find around there. So, because there's more time. All right. I think we might want to move to 50 meter moves because the 30 doesn't do very much. If okay. that's, yeah. Let's if, wait till yeah. Atlanta starts we'll actually moving. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty, I mean, we're pretty deep. Mm -hmm. 
I see we have Can you some. make that trail a little longer on Atalanta, or? What is that? Um, White, uh, oh, that yeah, yeah, can we take a look closer here? Yep. It's a very odd coloration. Oh yeah, look at that. Uh, go for Zoom video. Uh, anemone, or no, uh, urchin. Go just, a little just, wider. Just below in the middle. Yeah, I saw that little white guy. Yeah, can we take a closer look at that? Yeah. If we have time? Yeah, we do. Is that what you're looking for, Steve? Yeah, can we get a tight zoom on that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, there it is. Go ahead. Data, were you able to get something there? Do you want me to try again? Um, can you try again? Yeah. Okay, go for Zoom. Uh, okay, go wide for a sec. Uh, I got it. That's okay, okay, great. Um, can you get a little more delta? And can you, have we done any Uh, like less than 10. <laughs> uh, Steve, yeah. you were saying that yeah. we're not really seeing or oh, expecting moving. to see as many coral okay. and sponges time. and things in this area because of, on the grand uh, scale of things, these rocks just kind of tend to move around a lot more than where we dove the first time. Yeah, I mean, I, for, for, so a couple reasons. Um, Oh, there's, there's on the, the rock, rock there? Yeah. yeah. Bottom right. If we have time, there's a coral in the bottom right. Bottom right. Roger. Yeah, that was saying about, um, uh, yeah, the, when when rocks are not very stable, animals that tend to grow slowly uh, often won't settle, or or they'll settle on the bigger rock, like, like, like right here in front of us. <laughs> Um, so, in fact, okay. corals, you might video. say, are picking the best rocks. Uh, yeah. Another thing is these talus slopes are, uh, they usually are situated with a high angle of repose, uh, which basically means that uh, you're likely to have uh, debris falling and a turbulent environment. Do we have time to get a uh, tight zoom right in front of this colony? Um. Can you come up on the delta? Yeah. Just a little bit. Uh, yeah, I can do that. Because I did see a squat lobster inside of it. We want to make sure we oh at least really? get a good oh image boy. of it. Got a nice view on the still cam as well. Yep. Can you can you pilot the still cam and make some coral? notes? You want the still cam on it? No, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're just taking opportunistic images with the still cam. We'd like to zoom with the uh, main. Okay, with the Zeus. Yeah, okay. Zeus. Okay, go for zoom. Okay, so this is a colony of Chrysogorgia, octocoral. It looks like it's coming off the rock in the back. Uh, there's at least one squat lobster associate, but it's really hidden. Uh, Where do you see that? So right, right here. 
can see the, the more pigmented part is the, the head, and there's a second one right there in the back. I see it. Um, okay, can we, can we pan off to the right on the rock? There was a, another organism, probably a sea cucumber, that I would hmm. see right here. Go for zoom. Yeah, it um, is a sea cucumber with a, a very full gut. Well. Okay, let's go wide. Okay, Steve, I think it's time to scram. Okay. Yeah, I think we just have like a 10 minute layback. It's just. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's 10 minutes. Yeah. Then. But yeah, now we've gone 20 meters, so. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're moving it at all. Yeah. Good morning to our viewers in Kauai. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Nick, you're going to love this one. Somebody is asking, what is everyone's favorite type of rock? That's a very good question. It's a loaded question for me. Mm -hmm. um, I would have to say something that uh, samples you know, a deep mantle source, uh, so maybe like a peroxonite or a dunite, um, something that, you know, we know is, is not typical of a uh, shallow environment. What about yours? Um, I've asked you this a million times already, and I think I've, I've already forgotten. Is opal considered a rock? Uh, we can we can say opal is, is a rock. Just, it, yes. Yeah. Okay, I, so I, I, we discussed that it's, you know, a quasi-mineral. Um, it's a amorphous quartz, as we discussed. Yes. Uh, do you remember what that what that means? It has water in it sometimes, kind of. Yes. Or it's like kind yeah. of solid, but not really. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Look at me go. Yeah. Good job. Yes, yeah, so I really, I, I don't know. I just, I love opal. I think opal is gorgeous. Logan, what's your favorite rock? Oh man. <laughs> Um, I feel like maybe a boring one, but probably quartz, because where I grew up when I was little, they were everywhere in the dirt, so I had probably like a hundred of them, because we're always digging in the dirt and finding them. Yeah. I don't think that's boring. Yeah, some of them are cool. Some of them end up having like really beautiful colors in them. How big were those cords? Do you remember? Probably like the biggest one I ever found was like a handful, but like an eight-year-old's handful. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of the time when you're going to the beach, uh, that beach sand is, is uh, fine grain quartz often. There so there's go. quartz all over the place. It's, uh, it's very, very common, if not one of the most common uh, minerals you'll see, and mineral forming rocks, uh, rock forming minerals rather. So why are there quartz beaches, but are there basalt beaches? There are in Hawaii, yeah. Those, uh, um, and certain, certain beaches have those black, um, black with a little sand. bit of black sand beaches. That's yeah, that's, basalt. that's ground basalt, essentially. Yeah. Through the weathering process, um, by the time it reaches the shoreline, uh, you have a lot of wave action, which is going to reshape grains until they're uh, rounded and uh, very small. And that's kind of how we get sand. <laughs> Excellent. Also parrotfish, right? <laughs> Samantha, what's your favorite rock? Uh, favorite rock? I would have to say... Wait, did we already talk about this? Is this a, like a softball question? No. Okay. <laughs> I was like, was there an answer I gave previously that I need to say again? Uh, I would say... Jade from Big Sur, Central California. That's okay. Where from. Uh, it comes from in that region, Serpentine. Actually, I don't know. Does all jade come from Serpentine? Does what? Does all jade come from Serpentine? Uh, jade comes from know. jadeite. Okay. Uh, mostly, yeah. So Big Sur jade, which maybe is not a true jade, maybe okay. it is, um, comes from Serpentine, which is this really cool green. Uh, I want to say shiny rock, but you said that you're not supposed to say shiny rock. We don't say shiny. So rocks. it is a uh, somewhat uh, 
Yes. Okay. Okay, it's a lustrous rock. Yeah. Um, that does sound grand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, you can find it um, uh, washed up, actually, on some of the beaches. Well, eroding off of um, a few cliffs along Big Sur. Interesting. Um, yeah, you can find it. So you can find it like partially polished by the ocean, um, or of course veins farther inland. I'm actually wearing a Big Sur jade ring right now. Oh, cool. Can't show it on camera, but it's a uh, it's like a light green, light green to dark green jade, which <laughs> describes all jade. Well, no, that's not true. There's red jade, white jade. What? So cool. some of these rocks are looking uh, pretty nice. Pretty sampleable. Pretty sampleable. I don't know how you guys are doing up there, but uh, you might be able to grab one. Yeah, we I'll definitely happy to. could grab one. I will also hold the ship. Uh, you don't need to. Okay, we'll do a. Yeah, I grab, grab and go. Everything's moving pretty slow right now. Great. So. I'll grab and grill. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's take a look at that if we can. Okay. Do you have a favorite rock, Gabby? Me? Yeah. Oh yeah, obsidian. Oh yeah, good oh. choice. Oh, nice I love like s I've gotten some pretty cool obsidian from the seafloor. From the seafloor? Oh really? Yeah. I have obsidian from land, but did not know about. I mean, at least I think it was obsidian. It was like very sharp, very black, and very lustrous. <laughs> <laughs> Checks <laughs> out. <laughs> I almost said it. <laughs> yeah. Do you have Have you seen any snowflake obsidian? I don't know what that is. It's obsidian with like snowflake formations okay. in it, little white snowflakes. It's really pretty. So obsidian is another one of those amorphous minerals. Uh, it didn't have time to nucleate uh, and create a crystal lattice. So it's not a true solid, believe it or not. Hmm. Oh, no way. It's a flowing glass-like object. What? Yeah, it's, it's a volcanic glass. So this looks cool. like it might still be connected, but let's give it a little poke. Okay. Poke. Wait, so it's not a solid? Uh, well, it's like glass in the form okay. that glass is uh, uh, a very slow, slow for slow moving. Uh, uh, not connected. Not connected. <laughs> Running away. You don't say. Still got a shot. It's a great shot, Steve. Yeah, I was wondering if I could use that to zoom in on the rock. There's some xenophire force on the rock. I like the cinematic zoom on this. All right, how are we looking? Uh, can you rotate it, please? The QVC spin is lower. I'll take it. Where to? Um, starboard bow box, A, B, or D. A, B, or D. Roger. Sorry, okay. I jumped the gun on that. That's okay. Karen. No worries. I appreciate it. Cool. Some people are wondering about the time limit on the ROV. Um, so actually there really isn't a time limit. It doesn't um, run on oxygen or anything like that. So it can so it goes a actually stay box. down there yeah. indefinitely a, B, if we C, D, were going a, to do an B, indefinite dive. Yes, C is second from back. Yeah, right. starts, so a, B, start, B, B. starts forward and goes aft. Yep. This dive is going to be about 20 hours. And I think we are currently about six hours in, if I'm not mistaken. So, Brittany, our dives are typically limited by just the amount of samples we can stuff onto the vehicle. Oh, okay. Well, there's, um, there's another, there's sort of like an absolute upper limit, which is um, vehicles are filled with oil that is very lightly pressured. Uh, and um, you, there can be very tiny leaks. And if your pressures get too low on critical systems, which takes days on a vehicle that's in good shape, then it's time to come up and refill. Okay. So not. In but theoretically, there is no max. It's 
Thank you, Gabby. 2702. Thank you. Well, that move is just about wrapping up. Okay. I'm going to keep moving. Uh, sure. Science, keep moving. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Bridge nav. Let's do another five zero meter zero seven zero. So where did your obsidian come from? Um, we found it, I think the last time I pulled any up was Eastern Pacific Rise, mm. uh, nine north off of Mexico. Yeah, do you have the coordinates? Can we? Uh, <laughs> I don't know the longitude. <laughs> uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it was, I think it was Thank obsidian. You. I guess it's, is there anything else that looks like obsidian? Oh, um. As lustrous. As lustrous, <laughs> as sharp. Sharp, okay. It's uh, like splint, like really sharp. Yeah. You mean dragon glass? Dragon glass? <laughs> Sounds cool. You have to make everything about biology. <laughs> <laughs> Biologists. Steve, did you go over your favorite rock? Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Steve. What did he say? Classic. I wish you all could see his face back here. He's so proud of himself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you can. He was waiting for that. He's been waiting 20 minutes. <laughs> Is Logan doing the uh, dash cam? Cam science. There you go. <laughs> yes. See, like, the crowd, Is he very smug right now? He's extremely smug. You can see it on <laughs> camera. <laughs> oh, my God. Thanks for pulling that up. <laughs> What's your favorite rock song, Steve? <laughs> Is it I Want a Rock? <laughs> I think no. that's your favorite rock song. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, definitely uh, set that for your uh, alarm when you wake <laughs> up in the morning. <laughs> My poor roommate. Brown, do you have a favorite rock? Uh. <laughs> I guess it would have to What's be. What's the distance uh, of our layback right now? What the distance of what? From vehicles or ship? Uh, the ship to Atlanta. Ship to Atlanta. Uh, do, 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 do. uh, 80. Okay. Uh, I guess it's somewhere. That's fine. Yeah. It looks really impressive because of all the grids. It does. Oh, here I can change that. There. You, oh, yeah, that's better. <laughs> It's actually a terrible grid. It's 50 meters. Yeah, what is there. that? Oh, uh, it just made me zoom? feel better. Yeah. What's up? Can we zoom there? Yeah. We Go sampled. We sampled this last year, and uh, it was the first one we'd ever seen. Um, but this is actually, uh, from the best we think we could tell, it's a solitary zoanthid, hmm. um, and we have vouchers of this from last year at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. And I don't know. Go I ahead. don't think anyone's looked at it, so. Um, maybe a, another project for when I get back home. Interesting. But, okay. yeah, that's that's what we could surmise from it. Bronwyn, did you get a picture? Do you want another zoom? Yep, I got it. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it's really interesting it how stark. There's some cool, like, maybe pillow lava things going on here. These, like, radial... Yeah, I was looking at that. That, that It almost has, like, a flower type yeah. of a shape to it. It's, like, blasted apart or something. I guess in that case, the lava would have uh, erupted vertically and then kind of dispersed laterally. Cool. So I have Daphne joining us from Indianapolis. And hello, Daphne. Um, they're wondering, have we seen any lionfish? So the answer is no. Go for um, zoom. Yeah, good zoom. If we saw a lionfish, this this far deep would be very, very 
not good for that lionfish. Um, it's lionfish like to live in coral reefs in tropical waters. And where we are right now, um, there's about okay, 9,000 feet below the surface. So very, very dark, very, very sure. cold. Definitely not the ideal place for a lionfish to be found. So that was a nematocarcinus shrimp, uh, the long-legged deep sea shrimp. We see it often on soft bottom. Oh, there's a coral there. Where are you looking? Good eye. Oh, yeah. Go zoom. Everything here is just really small. It's not that it's not here. So this looks like the same species of uh, coral that we saw earlier. Is there any chance we can grab a snip of this? Snip and slurp? Uh, just have to be pretty quick. So you ready to do a snip of this? Yeah. I have 20 meters left. You want me to hold here? Uh, or snip and slurp? I don't think it's going to change anything. Kay. We've got such a big... Agreed. <laughs> um, can you circle it again? I yep. lost it. Right on the lasers. Okay. okay. If Adelanta Atlanta gets ahead, we'll just... Let you catch up. So far, this represents about one third of the coral diversity we've seen on the slope. So we want to make a <laughs> representative collection of it. it. And it has really long sclerites in the either between the tentacles or on the tentacles. Either way, it should be really easy to identify with that characteristic. We'll There's pick not it up, and I'll have you hold it, and we'll s zoom ahead a little bit. Yeah, uh, that's fine. I mean, if we can get a tight zoom, that's great. Go for and, zoom. And worst case scenario, we'll just take a look at it on the ship. But I think snip and slurp is yeah, sounds perfect good. here. Um, if we can go for at least okay, half of go this, wide video. that would be ideal. There's not much tissue there, and we'd like to get enough material for all the interested parties. Okay. Uh, so videos push in, but keep the jaws and wrist sort of in the frame. Sounds good. So you can see how the tentacles are contracting there, or, or the polyps are contracting there. They kind of are taller than they are um, wide in this case when they're contracted. So it shows us that those sclerites are providing some structure for the polyp, and that could be a diagnostic characteristic we would use to help identify this species. Beautiful. Looks good. Nice. Thank you. Okay. Go wide, please, video. Okay. Um, I'm going to put bubble on the porch and zip up ahead a little, and then we can uh, deal with the sample. See, consult my uh, cladogram here for bamboo corals. Bamboo corals are one of the groups that we probably know least about, uh, despite being some of the most abundant and specious um, corals we find on seamounts out here. Uh, and also, there's not a lot of diagnostic characteristics we can use to identify them in situ on the seafloor. So any collections are really, really valuable, uh, both for identifying the morphology of s different species, but also sequencing their DNA and getting a better handle on their uh, genetic diversity. Bamboo corals are one of the few uh, deep sea exclusive uh, groups of corals. They used to belong to a group of corals that um, had some shallow water representatives but were recently revised taxonomically to um, 
well, at least this group uh, was revised recently to now only include a lot of the deeper species, deep sea species. Um, after this, we're going yet. to uh, wait for a few more things. Pull a plate. Okay. Do you have a spare hand for the winch? Yep. Hey, Steve, at this yep. step, would it be reasonable to maybe be looking for lantern fish or anything like that? Or um, it's a little deep um, for lantern fish, so that that would be like mctophids. Um, it's possible, but I would suspect they would be a little bit shallower. But it's totally possible to see them. They, they're th those are the types of animals that make up the bulk of the uh, deep scattering layer. Uh, so, in the order of hundreds of meters below the surface, uh, and they make these migrations up and down the water column. But we're a little bit beyond the depth that they migrate from and to. But it's possible to see other fishes down here. Uh, mostly these eel-like fishes, like cusk eels. They saw one a bit earlier. Sanafabranchids, maybe. Yeah, all these types of long uh, eel-shaped fishes. We do often see lantern fish when we're ascending or descending with the vehicles. Do you really? Yeah. Oh, that'd be so cool to see that. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, they're like little blips going by, but... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then somebody was curious, um, have we ever seen an underwater avalanche? Um, I don't know if we've seen one uh, live, but there's certainly evidence that uh, those type of things happen often. Uh, near a coastal area, you'll have turbidity currents uh, from areas of runoff, and you can always have slope failure. Um, in any type of region that has tectonic uplift. Um, so there's definitely, I'm sure, evidence of some kind of uh, debris avalanche um, under, the, uh, under the sea. Good to note down for the triclops that don't turn the focus too fast, otherwise it'll freeze up. Uh, it seems to right itself after a few seconds. Um, okay, Data, uh, where are we at for slurp jars? Do we have any free? Everything is free. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna just hang out here for just a second. <coughs> this is the most well-traveled coral. It's a pretty well traveled. Do you have auto auto XY is definitely pen peg pegged to the DVL, right? Yep. Connected. Not, not the USBL. It DVL. Okay. As far as I know, because when we reset the DVL, okay. Um, no, it'll, I mean, it'll knock you off. No, no. Oh. I mean, there's you can change it, right? Like it, it, you have to set it to DVL. Yes. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dead rock. Yeah, yeah. When when we get to the bottom, we set it to dead rock. Yeah. Do you want to? So we have a little comment here from our science portal. Um, apparently, uh, Oahu famous, famously uh, collapsed around uh, 1.5 million years ago, uh, generating the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that, Brittany, could you, can you give me? New Uanu. Thank you for that, Brittany. Um, excuse me. Bronwyn. Brittany and Bronwyn. <laughs> Brittany and Bronwyn. <laughs> Bronwyn. Know, yeah, the New Uanu slide. Uh, again, that was uh, 1.5 million years ago. So going Thank back you. to the earlier question about uh, underwater avalanches. Well, there you go. Data, this is jar seven. Thank you, Dr. Conrad, for that yes. assist. <laughs> uh, you're okay, you're putting in jar seven? Yeah. 
science, do you want to target here as well? Since this is where the sample's going in, or just where it was collected from? Where it was collected would okay. be preferred, yeah. Great, we already have that. Nice. Steve, did you see that um, gelatinous animal go by? Gelatinous who? There was a, gel a gelat la, gelatinous something that went by, and it kind of like a plagotheria. No, I didn't But it could have been a jelly. Let's switch drop weight. With which yeah. one? Keep, Keep an eye out. Switch if it's plagotheria, it's probably one. not going to be the only one. Um, nope. Pick your poison. It's hard to tell if it was a jelly or the easiest plagotheria, one. but fun, yeah, fun. Uh, Shall I do it just so? Yeah. Okay. Totally. Yeah, just grab the low-hanging fruit. So for no, our just viewers, focus. Our viewers at home, if you uh, go to uh, the video feed number three, you can see the top side view of okay. um, how Gabby is able to operate this ROV. So you can see it's uh, quite some large controls going on there. Um, so again, the ROV Hercules is... Science, have you seen the... Um, I'm sorry, Brittany. Have okay. you seen the coral go into JAR7 yet? I have not. I have not either. Have we tried turning off section to see if it's in there and just or good idea. stuck use, to the top? Use bubble to see if it's in the, in the hose somewhere. Do you happen to remember which way the R clip was? Is it just meant to be a straight out pull? You should just be able to pull it out. Yeah. I, I didn't do this one, but yeah. There you go. Um, okay. Put the pin. Um, before we put that away, maybe in the front box, um, I'm going to zip ahead a little. Okay. Now we should be able to zip quite a bit quicker. Yeah, still no coral in seven. I'm not okay. seeing any motion at all. Oh, I turned, uh, I turned the section oh, okay. off. Okay. Um, I'll turn it back on in just a second. Shit. Sorry. Okay. Do we have to leave or do you wanna do you want me to get it just now? Um science, is it okay if we leave that there or do we need to get that? Uh would would it cost a lot of time? Uh, I, mean, I, I can imagine. I can try. We should try to make an effort. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We've kinda we've fallen behind a little bit here. Ship stopped. Okay, thanks. There in the top left, Steve. Top. Do you see it? The gelatinous. Go uh, on. Oh. Bottom left. Oh, now. it's in it's in uh, our, uh, Atlanta's camp. What? There it is. Okay, if you get a bonus rock, I don't think <laughs> I don't think we'll complain. Definitely not. It'll count against our quota, though. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have to scram here. Okay. Oh. Well done. Do you want me to log that bonus rock? Uh, well, we'll see if we get it. I have a target for yeah, it if we do yeah, get it. If it gets in the box, we'll, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, we should, I think we should put a sample, uh, sample ID for that rock if it does make it in the box. Do we know if the coral made it into seven? I haven't seen it yet. I've still got suction. No, I've turned off suction a couple times. Uh, I've got suction going again. We can look at the um, at the hose once we're set up again.
That's weird. Yeah, it is. I like this uh, landscape on the triclops. So. I mean, we can pick up the hose and like sort of pull it in and out and that, cause it was a long piece, right? And there's this current setup on the suction has some very sharp bends in it. Mm -hmm. um, usually when we suction, we have it all nicely stretched out. Um, and so there aren't any sharp bends, but because we just left it where it was, cause we were using the arm already. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. yeah so I think it's, to. I think it's probably just stuck at a sharp bend. Sure. It'll be yeah. no problem to get it going again. No problem. We'll stow our bonus sample. <laughs> Do that. Um, are you okay with that going in the yes, uh, forward. Front, front box or the, I don't know where, have you seen where people usually stow these? Yeah, it's fine. It's small. It's, we can throw it in the front box either. Okay. We're in a good position now. Dealer's choice. Okay. And we halved our layback, so it was Beautiful. like a good, good run. Yeah, nice. Okay, I'm gonna tool tray out if you're ready. If you do you want it all the way out or is that good enough? Uh, yeah, you could do all the way out. Uh, perfect. Thank you. So, um, what are we putting in the box here with the rock? Um, that's a pin that holds the uh, that holds a drop weight in place on the porch. That rock is, uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Is it squishy? <laughs> is that the problem? I think it's just stuck on the arm. Got a little shake. Uh, oh, oh, so close. That's all right. Did it right, so go? Yeah, no, but that's fine. We'll leave it. We'll, we won't call it a sample for now, but if it comes up, it'll be an opportunistic one. So cancel sample. Do you want me to tag it at anything specific in high pack? Uh, yeah, you can drop a target and just say, you know, possible rock stuck on the front porch from this location. At okay. least we'll have a depth for it. Yeah. And the time. Uh -huh. Okay, so the next move is going to be pulling the suction just out straight. truck might might survive uh it's it's wedged white right in between the two oh, cameras i saw the i saw the coral in there oh, at the elbow exactly where we suspected at least i think i did how would you label that if it comes up uh, later on um well, if it did come up later on so we dropped a target where the depth uh, 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 for the depth that long and we can just, uh, just hold it enter like it that. manually yeah. later at uh, like 26.18. Yeah, I mean, the, the chances of it falling off are still pretty high. Okay. Um, so, yeah, we, we'll deal with it if it comes up. It's labeled possible poor truck at this yeah. point. <coughs> yeah, we usually call that a bonus sample. Uh, you know, 
the most uh, chance it'll fall off is probably during recovery, and we won't know until we get it up on deck, which is totally normal. It's got a nice little spot where it's wedged in there, though. Yep. I'm holding out hope. We've had a series of hitchhikers over the years, including crabs that have stayed on for sometimes hours, just hanging out in the vehicle. Hitching a ride. Yep. There was some funny video of, uh, I think it was one of the early 2020 cruises, like uh, up in the Olympic Coast area where crab was <laughs> crawling on top of the, the Herc Zeus cam. Hmm. Trying to take a selfie? Something like that. <laughs> There was that one fish from last cruise that got all the way into the frame for two weeks. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. The most famous hitchhiker, right? Yep. Hmm. Oh, all right, folks who are joining us online. Um, welcome to the Science Party Line, SPL. My name is Brittany. I'm a Science Communication Fellow aboard the Nautilus. Currently, we are diving at an unnamed seamount, Site 2. We are in the Johnston Atoll Cubs. region. Um, Steve, I don't see that coral showing right. up. Um, yeah. It's somewhere between... <laughs> Yeah, that's all right. It's somewhere. It's in some elbow somewhere in this thing. Okay. Right. <laughs> we uh, know we got it. Can you cycle the jar? Will that change I anything? just did that okay. a few yeah. times okay. just to make sure that we were like locked into the right one. All right. That's fine. Let's uh, let's keep going then. Okay. Um, maybe it'll sort itself out. I'm going to set da this down and then try and just feed the hose back in. Cause it's yeah, stuck. sounds great. So our current dive... Uh, Depth is about 9,000 feet. In case any of you were wondering, and let me see if I can get the temperature reading. My guess is probably it's about 2 degrees Celsius, but let me confirm. 1.8 degrees Celsius. All right. Nice guess. Yeah. Right. Science, do we want to hit this waypoint at uh, the edge? As we start to head up to the summit here, or can we... Uh, no, you can continue straight through. Great. But if we do see any larger relief uh, outside of the talus slope, it would be nice to check that out. Roger. Okay. Ready when you are uh, ROV for a move? Uh, yeah, okay. I think so. Are Karen, are you okay if I just keep moving along while you're working on that? Yeah, I think that's like for the best. So somebody was asking, does Johnston at all have to move? a... Yeah, go for it. We're going to do 080. Zero 080, zero. Zero zero, roger. Bridge nav. Let's do the gauge cap for a sec. Let's do 50 meters, 080. Zero zero. So is it a relatively flat plane, or is there a big difference between its highest and lowest points? So again, we are um, currently diving at a sea mount. So I imagine that we are higher, a lot higher than the flattest point around Johnston Atoll. Um, but I think maybe, Nick, would you know more a little, know a little bit more about that? Uh, well, like you said, we're, we're, we're at a sea mount near Johnston Atoll. Johnston Atoll itself is, uh, Subaerial, so it, it, it does reach the uh, the surface of the ocean, um, but there are a few flat top uh, sea mounts that we've been exploring. Our our first dive was a was a guillot, a flat top guillot, um, and uh, that's one of the things that we're interested in in better understanding uh, the nature of those uh, flat top guillots, whether or not they are uh, erosional and uh, uh, features of subsidence, or if they are actually formed that way during an effusive uh, lava flow. So I'm not sure if that answers the questions. But. Yes. 
That was a lot of big words. <laughs> <laughs> Effusive lava flow, that sounds... Wait, effusive or effusive? Effusive. 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 Does that mean? Uh, it, it means it's it means? <laughs> it's the <laughs> opposite <laughs> of explosive. Uh, so it's a very ah. gentle, um, ah. like almost liquidy, low viscosity. Oh uh, gosh! Oh, wow. Well. Hmm. Slow gush. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So I did say earlier that the current temperature is about 1.8 degrees Celsius. That's about 35 degrees Fahrenheit. So nice and cold. And so I have a question. What is the difference between a guillot and a seamount? Are they not similar? Uh, a guillot is um, a seamount that is uh, not reaching the surface. Uh, it's, uh, so you have a seamount, which is subaerial, uh, an atoll, uh, which is just basically the corals uh, that are growing off of a submerged seamount, uh, and then the seamount proper itself is just the structure. Um, and when it's a guillot, then it is completely submerged and almost no coral uh, surrounding the, the top. Oh. So this is a seamount because they're quite they're all seamounts, essentially. All any, right. any any structure over, I think, a thousand meters is considered a seamount. Okay. And there's anywhere between, you know tens of thousands to possibly hundreds of thousands of seamounts scattered throughout the ocean. And I think we might have only explored a few hundred of those. So we have a lot of work to do. Yeah, so this current seamount that we are exploring has never been um, it's nice it's never been explored via ROV, but it has been mapped previously by the EV Nautilus uh, last year during NA140. So while we're here at the seamount, we are taking a look at the... Oh, that is a good rock. Um, is it possible if we can sample that? <laughs> <laughs> Only with our eyes. <laughs> Classic geologist. <Yeah. laughs> there is uh, something sticking I see out right here. Can we take a closer look at that? Classic biologist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, looking at the rocks and the biology that, that we have Go down here. Zoom. Taking a closer look at this. Coral? Mm. So, this is... This is not alive. Oh, it's uh, formerly so. something. <laughs> okay, go on. Yeah, unclear. Possibly a hydroid, possibly a sponge, possibly a uh, coral, but yeah. Sea pig? Definitely not a sea pig. <laughs> 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 now we gotta find a sea pig, because that's just sad. <laughs> Such hope in your voice. Sea pig? <laughs> Anywhere? <laughs> And to the point that was raised about there being thousands of seamounts in the ocean, um, part of the reason we are spending our time out here also doing some high resolution mapping of the seafloor is to determine exactly the, uh, the size and structure of those seamounts. So uh, yesterday we, was it yesterday? The day before we had a, a little bit running on the ship um, uh, based, uh, to determine the height of a seamount that we were going to map over. <laughs> yes. And so the satellite altimetry, so you can actually determine um, kind of general uh, seafloor bathymetry from satellite, um, but it can be very, um, very different than the actual um, bathymetry. So the satellite altimetry said that the seamount that we were passing over was going to be about 435 meters in altitude. And it ended up being uh, sure. well, Gabby. What what did it end up being? <laughs> <laughs> the winner, 
the winner of the uh, the bet. <laughs> oh, here's something in the was, lower left. I'm so mad about that. It was 1779, yes. Lower left. Lower left, OK. What are we looking All right at? Right oh, there, the something, coral. something, yeah. Yeah, could I? Don't want to get my hopes up. <laughs> so yeah, so a difference of, of 1,300 meters um, from the satellite altimetry to the high-resolution mapping that Go we did. Zoom. So really important um, for understanding what the seafloor looks like, especially if you're a submarine or, or other um, yeah. or ROV in this instance. Can exploring. we uh, grab a snip of this? Do we have time? Yeah. Go wide. Are you looking for a snip of the coral or also the squat lobster? Well, the, if we snip the coral um, partially, the squat lobster will come with it, which and which is a which is good because we've seen other uh, other colonies. Yeah. Or actually, uh, do you want to get the rock that it's on too? Or is that? Yeah. I'm not going to say no. Yeah, let, let's see if it's loose. Maybe that might be the best way to grab it if it's we'll small see. enough. And this move is just finishing. It's like eight meters okay. left. Can okay. you take the camera? What's up? Can I take the camera? Yeah. Let, let's just examine it first and do a, make a quick, quick check. I did see the rock move oh, underneath it. Oh. There you go. Cool. But Thanks. if it's too big, then awesome. maybe not. <coughs> Can I'm gonna. Okay, go for yeah. zoom video. Are you trying to keep the jaws and the sample in the same view? Cool. There you go. Sounds good. Yeah. Beautiful. Heavy. Can we tap the rock? Tap. Is that a uh, Chrysogorgia? Yeah, the Chrysogorgia. So apparently there are currently 43,454 seamounts that are currently identified. That, did that wow. move? Okay, that's more it, than I thought. It looked like it moved. Yeah, yeah it okay. moved a little bit. Yeah, um, can we pick it up and just see how big it is? Sure. I think it's going to have to go in the starboard box, and we we, we can really only fit it in, in E with the previous rock. Uh, so I want to make sure that it's not just... Oh yeah, that, that's smaller than I thought. Well, it's still there. So, th um, I guess we're going to call this a, a a geology sample if we get the whole thing. But let's just hold up. What would you say the size of that is, Steve? About uh, 10 to 15? Yeah, I'd say 10. 10, 10, to, 10 to 15, yep. Let's stand by and see what we get first. Take a quick zoom tight. Yep. Okay, um, we need to get going. We can do more work on it in a sec. We've got a yep. weird feature coming up. All right, so we can stow it in the starboard box. That would be ideal. Okay. Yep. okay. Sounds good. We uh, In just a second, we will do that. And the ship is stopped. Actually, um, I don't know. What do you think about nap. the chances of the forward box? Do you think that's forward boxable? I I think so, Karen. Okay. Yeah. Think? Why, yeah. All right. Let's go forward box then. Okay. Uh, since it's got some potentially uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of value in that sample. And well, we can see over that feature, whatever it is, but. Yeah, yeah, that was weird. Right. Yeah, it 
did show up. It was. Did you see it when it was like a pointy prow? Yeah, that was odd. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I'll I'll ask, but you know I totally know it's it's difficult to do if we can drop the rock in first so it doesn't crush the biology. That would be ideal. So. Yeah, I'll give it a go. Um, I think it would be easier if I set it down and then picked it up, kind of. Totally your call. Top, top view, but. Um, yep, totally your call. Whatever we have time for, of course. Yeah, so if if we get this, we'll call it a geo sample, um, and the biology will be sub samples. Was a sea star? No. Oh, no, fake sea star. Fake one. Fake sea star, yep. Created by the contours of the rock. Nick, somebody was curious, has there ever been a meteorite found on the ocean floor? I believe so, and uh, I think I was talking to Samantha about this just yesterday. She might be able to actually elaborate on this a little bit. I that. actually took a sample that had a meteorite in it. Yeah. What? Please do tell. Same crew. Yeah. Were you on the cruise ship? Yeah. It was ages ago. I yeah. 2018, I think. Yeah. yeah Olympic yeah. Coast. Yeah. And, uh, and 2020. Go on. We went back in 2020, too. Oh. I, yeah, no, you. Just <laughs> I just took a, I took a suction sample. Okay. It just happened to have one in it. It was yeah. like dumb luck. Yeah, we were, um, in 2018, we were off of the Olympic Coast National Marine Sanctuary, so off of um, Oregon and Washington, and a meteorite had been um, tracked to a particular location off of Washington, and um, yeah, we had um, the NASA Cosmic Dust Curator from Johnson Space Center come out uh, on the ship with um, yeah, coordinates and a whole host of, yeah, I don't know, stand by. Yeah, we should be good. Sorry, I turned Samantha down just a, a twinge, but maybe I turned her down a little bit too much. I said I turned Samantha down just a bit, but maybe I turned her down a bit too much for you all. I can still hear you all just fine. You're coming through. Oh. Oh, oh, that. Yep, yep, we'll do. Yep. Mm hmm. Yeah. Well, that, they're all holding yeah, position ACs now, right? And temps are all fine. Yep, ship has stopped. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I imagine it would be very difficult to find a meteorite. I don't know. I was kind of hoping that I could try and just get it on the side and then like slowly let it go. But I, if you think you can like, um, if you think you can sit down and it's not going to waste too much time, it. Last little piece. That's all right. It'll grow new corals. Yeah, for sure. So once we collect these samples of coral or the squat lobster or the rocks, then what is the next uh, step? Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. After we collect them, you may just try it right now. Or what or are the next steps? I should say. I'm sorry. What was the question? There's a lot of chatter. That's fine. Um, so once we collect the biology samples or the rock samples, what are the next steps in terms of, I guess, processing? Or why do we collect them in the first place? 
Yeah, so th this is a really unique opportunity. It allows us um, to basically collect all the things that we're interested in, most of the things that we're interested in on, on the dive in one, in one go, kind of minimizing our you know, impact of sampling uh, you know, across you know, a, a region. So we have our rock, uh, which tells us something about the, the geology of the seamount. We have our coral, which tells us something about the biology. And then we have associations uh, among the coral um, of animals that we've observed earlier in the dive um, through imagery that we have an opportunity to collect, which will tell us uh, the identifications of those. Um, so our goal is basically to take these and, and document um, in detail some some things about the collection when we get it back to the ship. So for example, uh, you know, color and life is something that's really important for us to document on the ship, um, making sure that we take good photos and, uh, and describe what we're seeing. Um, because when things get preserved, they sometimes lose some of the life characteristics. Um, and then we'll ship it off to the museum where it'll get uh, accessioned, but we usually preserve everything in alcohol on the ship, uh, which allows us to do a lot of things from looking at DNA to morphology um, for potentially hundreds of years or longer. Nice. Speaking of DNA, um, I know you kind of told us a little bit about eDNA the other time. Are we going to be taking any eDNA samples while we're at this site? Do you... Yes, we are going to take eDNA samples at this site. Um, so we are looking for high density or uh, like an outcrop type community where we have, you know, several different types of corals in an area. Got it. Um, what we're seeing here is very diffuse. So we're seeing, you know, many of these types of corals, but but they're not in concentrations that might, you know, allow us to better identify um, samples that are present in the uh, in the uh, uh, species that are present in the eDNA sample. So um, critical to eDNA is making a good reference library. Basically, um, you can think of it like, you know, at, when you're checking out at a supermarket, for example, the library tells you how much, you know, the thing costs, for example, like uh, this coral, uh, it tells us it's a chrysogorgid and we can tell what species it is. Um, but, um, you know, having that reference library is important to telling us what the, the value of the um, species is. Is there a little fish in there, or is it to just the a part of the coral that broke off? Uh, we'll find out. Yeah, I'm not sure. Little critter. That's okay. Yeah, we'll We'll stow it as is. I think we might have lost the squat lobster, but that's okay. Thank you. Yeah, so that actually ties into a question that just came in a few minutes ago, um, asking about the tools um, that Hercules uses to sample. So as you can see, Hercules has uh, this robotic arm that helps to uh, either uh, pick up samples and drop them in different uh, compartments that are located on the ROV. But there's also a way Perfect, to... Perfect, thank you. Oh. Nice. Fantastic. There's a way to slurp up samples. Do you so want to get that big rock off the front? Or are you good with that? The big one. It's right by the camera lens. There are also, um, Hercules has uh, like co coral cutters, so able to cut a sample of coral and then gently uh, pick it up and place it into a compartment on uh, the ROV. What was that sample number? Um, 024. 24. And then lastly, we were talking, just talking about uh, collecting eDNA samples. So eDNA stands for environmental DNA. Uh, so it's just collecting a sample of the water that the ROV is currently in, and that sample then can get processed to find out what types of DNA profiles are showing up within that sample. So it's a very, very non-invasive way 
to get an idea of what kinds of things are living uh, down in these depths. So lots of different types, uh, different methods of sampling that Hercules can do. Very nice collection. Okay, science. Anything else in this area? Um, I think we're ready to keep going. Roger. RV. Holding on. Oh, oh. yes. Let's get your Roger pilot swap. Get your TMS up at a good separation. Nice sponge too coming up. Oh, so we're science while we're here. Um, can you look at high pack for a second? Are you yep. happy with a uh, kind of this direction yeah, that's fine. and then yep. up? Okay. Yep. That's Great. Fine. Interesting. It's um, the Chrysogorgia species. I thought that was. It doesn't look like it is that. It might be something else. So this could be a worthwhile collection in a couple of different Ooh, ways. Nice. But it's the, that that family in particular. That, that genus has very difficult to tell apart species on the seafloor. Uh, but we have been successful identifying it uh, from the first dive. We collected a small snip of a Chrysogorgia colony. Uh, and we were able to identify it using morphology, um, sclerite morphology on the ship over the past few days. Chrysogorgia. Mm -hmm. So unlike the rock samples, you're able to pretty much, um, once you have the biological sample in the wet lab, you're able to identify it much faster. It doesn't take months to identify species um well i mean uh, these are field identifications of course you know the specimen will go to the museum and we'll be able to examine it on a non-rocking ship um, which will allow us to do some more fine detail yeah. uh, dissections perhaps um, of certain animals but we'll also take uh, clippings for uh, dna extraction and sequencing uh, which we do on the ship um, and that will allow us to generate that data faster so we could pair our morphological ID with a, uh, a gene sequence. There you go. Okay. So Steve, I gotta ask, why coral? Why, why are you in love with coral? Okay. Why not? <laughs> Valid question. I mean, I also love coral, but... <laughs> Um, okay. When did that first start for you, and how did your... Uh, okay, how do I select... Yeah, what's, what's your journey of with, with the coral? Yep. And it's now an auto... Yeah, so uh, I say it would probably it have started... At least deep sea coral started in 2012, 13. Okay. Nice. Um, Sounds good. I was doing a lot of graduate Sounds my graduate work now. on the diversity of um, deep benthic communities, primarily in the Antarctic, and I found that corals were incredibly diverse and, and poorly known, um, you know, poor species okay. identifications from that area, in part because of lack of collections and also the ro remoteness of certain territories, you know, and okay. low sampling coverage, and uh, so they were a bit of a, an enigma, oh, and I would say globally there's probably not as many people working on 
deep sea corals as you might think, especially compared to shallow water corals. Yeah. And so there's a there's a good niche to um, work on research projects with. I didn't know you did work in um, Antarctica. That's awesome. I I have not physically been there, but I worked on data from uh, okay. um, from two cruises uh, using both of the Antarctic ships. Okay. Um, from 2009 and 2011, the Palmer and the Gould. So, Nick, same question for you. Why rocks? <laughs> um, I think you can go more generalized than that. Um, no. <laughs> um, basaltic rocks, right? Um, that's what we're mostly dealing with on the ocean floor. Um, they are great indicators of mantle processes, and uh, you know the mantle is uh, part of the Earth that we'll never really be able to sample uh, physically, uh, possibly ever, uh, especially the deep mantle. And uh, uh, basalts are, 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 are great resources for uh, uh, using uh, chemical uh, characteristics to help uh, kind of understand those mantle processes and and uh, and um, those reservoirs that create these rocks. Uh, so basically, it's 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 a it's a it's a way of sampling an area that we'll never be able to uh, physically drill down and, and sample um, otherwise. Got it. Okay. So I noticed that there is some steeper boulder terrain coming up, which um, is a bit of a change of scene for us. Is there a way we can see what slope we're looking at the camera? I can't hear you, Gary. Uh, let me see. Um, Would it be the... No, that's... Okay. To look at... Uh, uh, how we can do, do zero, zero, Kind of like zero. the slope angle of, of the camera uh, to see the... Oh, the tilt? Like yeah. The, yeah. Um, I think you could... Because it yeah, kind of looks flat on the great. screen, right? But obviously we're climbing the yeah. seamount here. I mean, I, I guess the this cam kind of gives you a better perspective because this is sure. this is fixed at you know perpendicular, mm -hmm. 90 degrees. Yeah. So it gives you a better perspective. Yeah. Those huge boulders in front of like you? Like this yep. separation. Yeah. Those are cool. Also known as good rocks. <laughs> <laughs> the best rocks. Okay. There's more of these Chrysogorgia yeah. col coral colonies all over. Yeah, we're seeing them all over now, and they've got these squat lobster associates. Shrimp. Yeah, it's just... On a large boulder coming up, uh, there are at least a couple species of corals and sponge. Um, like I mentioned before, a lot of these slower gl slower growing species do not like moving substrate um, and so if they can settle on uh, something that is more stable like a large boulder less prone to tumbling downhill they're more likely to grow larger and probably reproduce more often because there are uh, enhanced current flows around some of these larger boulders that might improve food supply food delivery to Suspension feeders. It looks like we're coming up on a nice sheet flow here. It's a nice photo too, yeah. Shrimpy. And shrimp. Enormous boulders. And the still cam. Yep. So in this uh, shot, you know, yeah. got, yeah, I think that's, could be, Uh, a bamboo coral or a primnoa. It's tough to tell at this height, but if we can get a smaller snap zoom in there, we can get a better idea on that. Can I zoom RV? Yes. So I, I can tell from this distance it's a primnoa octocoral. Um, so with this branching pattern, it would